Tonight, we tackle crime in Gotham City. Sounds pretty hopeless. You know, you think he would just relocate to Metropolis, where all of his problems can be solved by, eh, it's Superman's Superman problem. can deal with it. Tonight, we'll be talking about Arkham City and all the Batman. beautiful bat beatdowns <laughs> we'll be giving. <laughs> so this was released Tuesday, October 18th, which for any of you keeping track was last week. Yep. And over that week, I was I totally at a midnight release for that, and somebody was there in costume, and it was hilarious. You know, the hilarious thing is you were at the midnight release for that, and what did you pick up? Sims 3 Pets. <laughs> Next week's review game. That's right. <laughs> she didn't even get the game that we're reviewing this week. Shut up. At least I got something. <laughs> um, this is available for all three of the major systems, and by that I mean Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3, and Windows. No one remembers the Wii exists. It's probably be- better that way. I've got the Wii light staring at me, and frankly, the thing even looks like it's frowning. <laughs> <laughs> you were surprised to learn that this is rated T. Right? Like, I, I didn't pay attention to that, because really, I don't read the ratings on games anymore. Because it doesn't matter to you. Right? Because I can play anything, but like, upon playing through the first hour of this game, I was under the complete assumption that this was an M-rated Batman game. Because they have clearly stepped up the grit and the language from the previous version. Mm-hmm. And, like, even some of the things that Batman says, like, get close to that line of, I'm not sure he's a hero at this point. Like, we're, we're crossing into Frank Miller territory mm-hmm. of some of the interrogation methods, like when you grab one of the, the Riddler minions and are like, talk or you'll be drinking through a straw. Mm-hmm. Like... Batman gets pretty vicious and, like, descriptive of the amount of violence he's willing to inflict on these guys. Mm-hmm. Although, it's, some of those lines are funny. Like, grabbing one of them and going, how many bones didn't I break? Clearly making the assumption that, yes, there, that number can be higher or lower. He's going to fix some of the broken <laughs> ones? He's going to, in fact, repair their bones with bat gel or something, because he's got that. And then re-break them. Because he's Batman. Speaking of which, uh, you'll receive uh, getting on to graphics and sound and all that. The game looks fantastic. It's clearly an improvement from Arkham Asylum. In a graphic sense, not in an aesthetic sense. Yeah. Graphically, it looks much better, and it really highlights it in the fact that the environments are now open. It, it is a free-roaming city that you can just spend hours traveling to and from points in the city and exploring. It felt very it, it, it felt very Spider-Man 2 to me, but that was the one thing that I loved dearly about the Spider-Man 2 game. Mm-hmm. And uh, Batman... Was being Spider-Man swinging around buildings and stuff. You actually have new tools that make traveling around the city a lot more entertaining. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, Batman now has the ability to, to dive bomb, to just travel straight down quickly, mm-hmm. and then when you pull out of the dive bomb and let the cape go... Uh, those of you watching the camera will see wonderful hand motions for this. Those of you listening, just imagine me doing like motions with my hand that represent flying. Pantomime! Right? So if you level out from a dive bomb, you will gain accelerated speed and will actually be able to coast to a higher altitude than you were at when you started the dive bomb. Hmm. Bat cloaks, they're magic, I guess. Um, and the, the new grappling tool actually really does help you get around the city. It's the same as the old bat hook, but... There's a new mode that's been added to it. It's the, like, accelerator. Mm-hmm. So if you double-tap the X button after you've g- grabbed onto something, you'll accelerate to the point where it will send you flying above it, and you'll be able to just coast. So you can use that mode to actually travel across the city without ever touching the ground. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Um, yeah, just it, it's a really well-designed map overall. There, there's tons of just little hidden things. Uh, the character models look fantastic. Like, everything down to seeing Batman slowly getting mauled as this game progresses. Like, he goes from, Yay, I just got my bat suit. It's nice and clean and was just delivered from home to, I look like a bear has eaten my face. Like, that suit gets torn to shreds. Like, in the first five minutes, you get shot in the chest by Two-Face, and that wound in the suit, like, obviously it hit a vest... But the the injury to the suit lasts the entire game. You can see that. The bat cloak gets, like, progressively shredded as you play. I've got, like, nicks and cuts all over the suit from ninjas attacking me. Like, my face mask is now torn from where I've been kicked in the face repeatedly by Joker. 
Okay, then. You you get mauled as this game goes on. Alrighty, then. And, and it looks good. Like, seeing all of the iconic Batman characters rendered in... Well, some of them have had redesigns, like the new Mr. Freeze suit mm. looks fantastic. That is a great design. The character has never looked cooler. Um, ah, I see what you did nice there. Nice pun, right? Two-Face looks fantastic for what he is. Um... The Joker pretty much looks like he did in the previous game, although they do the cool facial scarring thing for his poisoning, and, and that turns out really cool. The only redesign I really don't like is the new Harley. Who looks like... She's de-aged somehow. Yeah. Like, I get that the, the previous incarnation of Harley, the Arkham Asylum version, wasn't all that popular. Mm-hmm. I, I thought it was kind of, well, awful in the previous game, too, but this... This redesign just doesn't work for the character. Mm-hmm. I, I actually would have preferred the classic animated series outfit. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't really fit in the, like, gritty verse. Yeah, the new grit verse. Yes. But, uh, Catwoman's outfit looks cool, and the, the Robin redesign looks great. I, no hot pants. No, no hot pants. Um, he's got a, a hooded cowl now. It, it looks really cool. He actually looks like he can take people in a fight. Like he might be the Bat Apprentice. Mm-hmm. So that's really great. Um, I don't really like the design from the pictures I've seen for uh, for Nightwing. Mm-hmm. He kind of looks like a tacky emo version of Batman, really. Which is kind of what Nightwing is. <laughs> uh, you didn't make me have to say it, but, you know, it was there. But, well... <laughs> Well, that said, I'm still going to play as the character, even looking beyond that. So, at least that's a success. Um, Penguin has been sufficiently redesigned to actually be threatening. He's less of the comic weird mutant character, and more... I don't know, he he actually appears like a, a little gangster. And I think that's exactly what he needs to be. Uh, they, they did a redesign where he's actually got a bottle lodged in his face, which you'd think would be really comical. I mean, it's meant to reflect, like, the monocle that the penguin usually walks around with, but it actually makes him, like, really gritty and kind of threatening looking. But, wow, he's really tough. Um, the redesign of the big characters like Bane and Solomon Grundy doesn't seem out of place, despite how huge they are. Mm-hmm. Um, and for Solomon Grundy to actually seem like a threatening villain is actually kind of impressive. This giant... Frankenstein zombie thing. You know, it, it was well done overall. I, I think that's really great. Arkham Asylum, if it failed at it or anything, it was facial animations. They were terrible in that game, and they are way improved in they this one. They are definitely improved in this. The characters' faces look great. They match what they're saying. Um, you, you don't get, have like the weird off lip syncing. You get the actual detail of characters as they're beaten and bloodied. Like, Batman looks like crap in this game because he's been poisoned. Like, you can consistently see him bleeding out. Although I think bleeding out refers to, like, when you die of it, but... Well, his his nose is bleeding. Um, when his mask gets lifted up partway through the game, you can actually see that it's kind of ravaging his face the same way it is to Joker's. And I think that's really cool. You can tell... Spoilers, I he, guess? He smiles a little bit when he's being sarcastic on his radio, and you can actually see it. Mm-hmm. So, I think that's really cool. Um, The voice acting is there, definitely. Uh, Kevin Conroy comes back. He was was basically, it was like a talking wall in the first game. Yeah, you didn't get any kind of facial animations. Mm -mm. Um, Kevin Conroy, uh, who's famous for his animated series role, comes back as Batman, and it does an excellent job. And Mark Hamill, thankfully... We've been been asked not to spoil the ending. I will not touch the ending, you're safe there. Okay. You're good. (laughs) <laughs> no, no ending spoilers for Arkham City. You're safe. Um, Mark Hamill comes back as the Joker and does an excellent job yet again. He he just is that character, I really. I love Mark Hamill's Joker. Right. That, that was... And I'm not even being, like, particularly nostalgic about it, even though I loved the animated series a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just... I just feel like his particular performance... Yeah. Is the most fun to watch. For the Joker, yeah. And and the animations match the character, which is great to see. Yeah, it's, it's just like every way this character is presented adds something to him. Mm-hmm. Even even in like, say, a fight scene, where he his leg will like pick pick back in like a very like exaggerated, over gestured way. 
Yeah, watching him fight Batman, like, hand-to-hand was hysterical, to be honest. Tara Strong is back again as Harley Quinn, which, she does an okay job. Um, she's not the original voice actress. Uh, no, but I think she does a good job. Yeah, you're not going to notice much of a difference. Har- Harley I noticed it a little voice. bit, but I, I kind of fixated on her character during mm-hmm. the run of the uh, animated series. She was my favorite. Yeah. So... It's so, beyond that, I, I guess the best thing that can be said is the voice acting works. At, at no point it's are been, you going to look at a character and go, that's not right. Like, I think Ivy's is a little weird. Poison Ivy's is a little bit weird. But it was also weird in the last game. I don't know. Something about it. Yeah, that, that character's interesting. Uh, Catwoman seems appropriate for what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really love the new Mr. Freeze. Mm-hmm. Both in design and in voice. I think it's perfect. It's exactly what I want from that character. He's got that creepy mechanical tone, especially mm-hmm. when he's in his suit. Uh, when he's out of it, he, he has that pathetic I need help sound to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it works. Yeah, but the, I think my main problem with Ivy is like that weird echoey bit. It, it Which doesn't, doesn't seem appropriate for the character. Yeah, it does. It seems out of place. <laughs> you don't have control of sound waves, lady. It's not like her voice is coming from a whole bunch of different directions either. Does she have a plant-based stereo system? No! <laughs> plant speakers. She invented them. Oh, hey, Tall, welcome to chat. Plant-based surround sound. Story and plot. So we're going to try to do this spoiler-free because I know a lot of people are really excited about this. Mm-hmm. Um, so the basic plot at the opening ga- of the game is Bruce Wayne manages to get himself kidnapped and thrown into Arkham City the giant super prison that opened in the middle of Gotham after Arkham Asylum failed. Which, wait, what? Who decided this was a good idea? Yeah, right, that is in fact the worst idea for a prison system ever. Let's just go, okay, so the idea of putting them on a small confined island far away from the city didn't work. Let's bring them closer to the city, wall off an entire section of the city, and just let them kind of go at each other. Yeah. And maybe on occasion we'll drop some food over there. That won't cause any problems at all. We'll we'll just let the notable inmates run their own gangs inside of this area. Oops. Oh, so well. you've got like super villain turf wars going on with yeah. like their own different like sets. You arrive with Penguin, Two Face, and Joker all having turf wars in their own individual territories that you have to fight through. Mm-hmm. So, it's actually kind of fun swinging over and just listening to them talk, ripping on each other, because Batman has excellent surveillance skills, apparently. Mm. And when they're specifically talking about just, like, how the turf war is going, making comments on the things that you're doing in the city, it's actually really interesting. Mm -hmm. The the basic thug's take on what's going on. So, Bruce Wayne's been thrown in the prison, which really, it was so much fun at the start of the game playing as just Bruce Wayne. Just like, man, I can't do crap. (laughs) Well, you have to walk through, like, the general insertion point into the city for criminals Mm -hmm. as Bruce Wayne in handcuffs. And Penguin's there to greet you when you arrive. Penguin and his gang are like, hey, it's Bruce Wayne, we hate that guy. And then you get to beat up the Penguin as Bruce Wayne. Whoops. Kind of awesome. Man, how embarrassing must that be? A billionaire playboy beat your ass and left you in an alley? Yep. Like, you can't even go back to, like, the bar or whatever and tell that to all your, like, super criminal buddies and be all like, man, just got my ass handed to me by... Oh, I mean, you wouldn't know that... It's a badge of honor when you say that he... Beat, that Batman beat my ass, but it's a it's a badge of no. dishonor when you say Bruce Wayne did it. Well, it's the difference between, you know, it's, it's, it's the mundaneness of it. Yeah. Because no, no one ever just, showed up at the bar and went, Clark Kent just beat the hell out of me. <laughs> exactly! <laughs> Who does that? Nice. Just um, like, I'm just, just like I, I need a tall shot of bourbon. Why? Clark Kent just kicked me into the teeth. <laughs> the weird thing about Arkham City, and th- this is going to be the key protagonist of the game, it... It's Hugo Strange, who's kind of one of those obscure Batman villains. A psychiatrist who managed to figure out who Batman was. And so from the start of the game, he knows who Batman is. And knows that this guy is loose in his prison. And doesn't seem to be doing anything about it. Which I always found kind of weird. Yeah, the plot's kind of shaky here, guys. Right. I think it's really... 
I think it's really just a weak, tenuous excuse to, have to you, drop you yeah. in this open playground and, and go go nuts. Yeah, because and you have an open license to basically beat up anybody in there because they're, they're all criminals. All, they're all the criminals, except the political prisoners who are in there who you get to rescue. It's like dudes who are in there because they crossed Strange and he had them chucked in there. Mm-hmm. Like, and at one point the mayor gets thrown in there. Mm-hmm. So that's a little weird. Just like, how didn't we protect him? Like, usually, how did nobody notice? Usually, you go to jail before you go to prison. So, like, yeah, the the whole plot just seems to be kind of a shaky thing to get you into the prison and to get you interacting with all of these different crime lords. Because it's much different than Arkham Asylum, where if you were interacting with these people, it's because you let them out or because you're trying to put them back in. In this situation, they're already in the prison. Mm-hmm. They're just out free doing their thing, and the best you can hope to achieve by interacting with them is that they'll give me what I want, and then I can leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't get that block so much. And I think there hasn't been a villain so far, even the ones that have tried to be helpful, that I haven't ended up having to fight with. And, and sometimes it's really shaky the reason why you're fighting with them, because like... It's because they have a, a weak, tenuous excuse so that you can beat up this classic Batman villain. Yeah, like, fighting with Mr. Freeze made no sense because you were helping each other, and in fact, he needed to request your help again. You fight Bane just because he's, he's just a like, jerk. Yeah! Yeah! By the way, I lost some stuff! <laughs> Namely my wife. Can you help me find her? <laughs> It'd be easier if you weren't trying to freeze me to death. Right? Like, just saying, there's, 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 there's definitely some very weak gaping plot holes that you might want to, you know, kind of scurry around. Yeah, but if you just work your way through them, you will have a great time. It's very fun. And going from character to character, all of whom are excellently represented, it is just enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a subplot that if you bought a new version of the game you can go through, which is the Catwoman DLC. Which will be available for purchase later for like six months. No, it's available now. Is it? Yeah, if you bought a used version of the game, which kudos to you to finding a used version of this game. A week after release, yeah. Right? Um, you can download this for like, I think it's $7.99. And it adds four chapters of the game where you get to play as Catwoman. One, actually, at the very beginning of the game, and which continues as you play. Mm -hmm. Um, You'll unlock more chapters as you go. And really, it's really cool. I like that it's not just, yeah, she's a reskin of Batman with her stats changed around a bit. No. No. All new animations, entirely different movement system through the game, unique abilities that are key for her, unique gadgets that are just for her. She's a full character. She even has her own upgrade system. I was so excited about this, you guys. And and there's going to be more of it, actually. I really like Catwoman. Yeah, like, you also have Robin, who's going to be added later. Actually, uh, if you purchased pre-ordered at Best Buy, you should already have Robin. So, uh, yeah, Robin has his own unique set and subplots. Uh, Nightwing's going to have his own subplots. I actually really want to see other characters added to this. I want to see, like, uh, Batgirl added. Don't see how, but... There are other Batgirls. Yeah, but... Getting Barbara Gordon fighting crime in her wheelchair would be a little difficult. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. I was trying to dance around that. Yeah, someone has no tact here. (laughs) Um, That's bad, and you should feel bad. <laughs> she's the handy, capable superhero. That that was really bad, and you should feel bad. Dude, Oracle's in this. She's totally awesome. Actually, her sarcasm really shines through in most of her lines. She's great. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. I want to also see, like, some of the Batman Inc. characters come in. That'd be awesome. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> that... That's essentially the plot. Like, there, there's not much else we can say. It's it's there to get you from point to point of beatdowns. And there's a lot in this game, which we'll get to when we talk mechanics. So, mechanics! Yep. Sorry, I'm just trying to... Gameplay! So, it's a game. And um, we played it. Yeah, it, it controls a lot like Arkham Asylum in Except- regard to the combat system. Yeah. You're, you're still going to use the same controls that you used. There's a lot more options in this game, specifically because you have a lot more gadgets available to you. You also have a lot more room yeah. to be able to like maneuver yourself about. Positioning, you know, it's pretty important when you're se- sizing up a fight. 
Yeah, and in this game, you have some enormous fights. Like, the biggest fight in Arkham Asylum was at the end of the game when you were finally walking into the cell block to confront Joker. Guys, this like, has been out for two years. If you're going to complain about a spoiling yeah. Arkham Asylum... I, if I remember correctly, the fight was like 15 guys. You do that in Arkham Asylum... Oops. Whoops. Somebody forgot to turn their phone off. Whoopsie. You do that fight in Arkham City in the first ten minutes. Pretty much the first fight of the game is like Penguin and four guys, and the next fight you go through as Batman is <laughs> against... Her, her, Penguin and four guys. Oh. It's... I'm sorry, I'm feeling very immature today. <laughs> it happens. Um, the next fight you go through is Two-Face, who's taking shots at you during the entire fight, and like... 25 of his henchmen. So you're immediately dumped into the, yeah, let's see how many guys Batman can fight at once. And it gets, like... It just gets worse. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's definitely a point it's, during it's, the... It be, basically becomes a regular thing. If you're doing anything beyond, like, just roof hopping and, like, taking on, like, the odd couple of guys here or there, um... Basically, they just like to dump a whole bunch of dudes on you at once on a regular basis and go, Be- Ha ha! The universe really, hates you! That's the fun of this combat system. It's, it's how very... well can I f- make this free flow combo go? How high can I get it? And, like, some of the new Batman moves, like, uh, if you use the circle button to stun an enemy, obviously I played the PlayStation 3 version of this before anyone asks. Derp. I never remember my 360 controls. I, I assume it's the red button. It's usually the red button. If you press the red button, you'll do a stun move and then can immediately just tap your regular attack button. So and let's watch see. I'm trying to remember the layout of a PS3 controller. It's X, square, there you triangle, go. circle. So that'd be the B button on an Xbox 360 controller. Okay. And then you press your normal attack button, which is square on the PlayStation 3 controller. Which is X on the 360 controller. You know how I know this? Because I've been playing Arkham Asylum on here by plugging my 360 controller, which is a really right. neat feature. So you stun an enemy with the circle button, and then you tap your normal attack button, and you will just proceed this is my to attack do this button. like rapid fire pummeling of this guy. Which, like, I did it to Joker once, and the combo hit like somewhere in the 35 to 45 range before he actually fell over. So you can just keep going with this beatdown mode. And that's actually what they call the move. It's the beatdown. Any of these moves can be executed on any enemy, which it really just adds to how cool the combat system is. It's not like, yeah, this one restrictive move is like pretty much a quick time event that you're only going to use against this one guy. No, if, if you learn a move for one specific purpose, you can always use that move. It does what a game should. It's going to teach you something in the game, and then that thing that you learned is going to apply to the rest of the game. And when you get to boss fights, it's going to be, hey, how well can you do those things that we showed you? This this is how gaming works, and this is how testing should work. Basically, gamifying education. Just saying. It's how well are you learning to do the things we show you. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. Um, As a result, the combat system is really solid and really fun. Just... The additions that they've made to moving around the open environment, the dive bombs, the grapple claws, all of that just makes this game better. Mm -hmm. It it only adds to how much fun you can have here. Um, While we're talking mechanics, the game has 400-something Riddler puzzles this time, because of course he came back. Because you need pickups, and you need to find things. I'm a little bit disappointed with the, the the caliber of the puzzles here. Yeah, some of these are extremely easy. In fact, most of them are just simple mechanical puzzles. Can you figure out how these mechanics work and then solve? The first one is, of course, you step on this button, it opens the trap, you walk up and pick up the thing in the trap. And then there are different variations and twists of that as you go. This time, however, they actually put in some good story mechanics for how this works, or why you're doing it. As opposed to just feeding the Riddler's ego? Yeah, or, just or like, hey, down the Riddler's hey ego. do these things for me. Ha ha, you can't solve them. No, this time it's the Riddler has taken hostages inside of the city, and will only reveal their locations after you collect so many of these things. So there's there's actually a real motivation for collecting these. Other than I need so I need a higher gamer score. <laughs> yeah. 
it, it's actually in the 100% that you save these people. Because mm-hmm. every time you find them, they are in some pretty bad traps. Although, I so will say... like Saw it, style, or...? Yeah, actually. Huh. The Riddler is kind of comparable to Jigsaw in this game. Only the person outside the trap needs to solve it. Well, I mean, that happened in a couple things, but, um... Mostly avoided the Saw films. I imagine not quite as gory. Yeah, no. It's still a teen-rated game. But, like... Um, Despite some glaring problems with that, but we'll get to it. <laughs> one of the things I, like, particularly enjoy is that defeating the Riddler's traps typically requires Batman to use his gadgets. Mm-hmm. Because the Riddler does cheat. Like, there was specifically a trap where... Oh, well, that's a load of crap. Well, he's the Riddler. Um... There was a guard sitting in the middle of a room and three bells lowered down, like him going in one and then two more. So it's a shell game? Yeah, and he was playing a shell game with you. But what you didn't see unless you turned on your detective mode was the guard lowered through a trap door once the bell was down and moved to a specific location afterwards. So where the shell game was going wouldn't match up with where the guy actually was Mm -hmm. unless you watched it through your detective mode, where you'd see his skeleton go down. Huh. I don't know, I thought that was pretty brilliant, actually, mm-hmm. that if you had played the shell game right and followed him, that you would have lost that one. And obviously, like, this being Batman, he, he wants to save everyone, so if you fail one of these, you have the option of restart, or you're forced to restart. Because mm-hmm. Batman saves everyone. Um, the same goes for the... Right! <laughs> except his parents. Whoa. The same goes for uh, these timed, uh, basically, sprint uh, games that you have to play with uh, Zaz. The character that we all assume died during Arkham Asylum somehow made it out. Apparently he didn't die. Also, you'd think releasing him in Arkham City would be the worst idea possible. Because he basically just gets off on killing the large, large numbers of people. Right, so you'd think we'd want to isolate him. Like, if, if prisoners are required to have the right of somewhat safety, then that's clearly denying that. So is locking them all up with, like, three of the major supervillains, but, you know. Yeah, they weren't supposed to have guns in here, just saying. I do love the announcements that come over the intercom, like, food will be dropped at regular intervals at des- designated locations. It is up to the prisoners to see that food is distributed fairly. Because that'll happen. Right. Man, we couldn't even guarantee that many corn dogs were distributed fairly at my high school. Clearly the prisoners have more rights. Mini corn dogs, man! So yeah, um, that's the, the game system. It really does lead to a lot of replayability, and I think that's fantastic. That even when you finish the main story mode, you'll still be able to run around the city and play as the extra characters and do all their quests. And collect all the Riddler stuff. Yep, or just explore. Or you'll endlessly have dudes to beat up, which was something that Arkham Asylum was greatly missing. Mm -hmm. Now, once you finish the game, that's it as far as encounters go and as far as combat goes. There were a set number of fights in that game. Mm -hmm. Once you were through those fights, that's it for your combat So does that mean you could continually grind experience from them? Yes, yes you can. Mm -hmm. If you want to grind experience and upgrades, do it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that says you can't. You just want to run around the city and punch dudes? Go be Batman. And I think that's really an improvement over the original. If I just want to practice fights and practice, like, stealth taking people down, I can do that. So, yeah, I guess that brings us to our next category, which I can't remember what it is. What? After gameplay? Yeah. Fun. Yeah, it's fun. You're Batman! Like... That this is by far the closest thing you will ever have to being Batman in a game. This this is it. This is the Batman experience. It's gritty. All the villains are there. All the punching dudes in, in the dark is there. Like it it is what you want out of a Batman game. You've got all the toys. It it's what Deus Ex Three wanted to be. You know, Adam Jensen is not Batman. This is Batman. 
And he even has the, like, I'm going to descend rapidly and then make the explosion happen, as if to give Deus Ex 3 the middle finger. Which I thought was brilliant. I do it better! Like, he even does the Batman landing. Batman does it more hardcore. He leaps off of a high thing, dive bombs down as fast as he can, like, pointed straight at the ground, and then at the last second aligns himself properly, and after landing on the ground, causes an explosion. A more of a shockwave type of thing, but yeah. Right? Because Batman does it better. Yeah, that needs to be, like, I could see, like, that would make a great poster. Just, like, Batman looking down disapprovingly at Adam Jensen? Just looking down disapprovingly in general. You don't even need to have that extra context. That could just be used for things. Fair enough. So, yeah. Um, somebody wants to brag about, like, some achievement they made, just point to that. Batman would have done it better. Okay, so while we're on the subject of fun, should we discuss the other thing? The thing that, like, kind of took away the fun of this game, really. Um, one of the problems that I had with this game starting out is... And as weird as it is coming out of me, the language in this. Yeah, see, you'd expect the feminism rant from me, but... The gratuitous use of the word bitch in the first... No, it continues, because it, it restarts again after a time. Uh, yeah, but it, it takes, like, breaks. But... Like, th- I understand them trying to capture the realism of, hey, this is a prison, these are dudes in prison, these are hardened criminals, but, like, still a teen-rated game, and... Other versions of Batman have managed to... Do gritty without doing... Yeah, like... Without specifically, specifically referring to all the female yeah. characters as bitches. Like, there, there isn't actually a female character in this game that isn't called a bitch, besides Talia al Ghul, but that's because all the ninjas around her are mute. And she never kind of goes out in the general population. Mm. So, yeah, and, and like, the internet it is exploding about this. Um, I recommend reading uh, Film Critic Hulk's um, article on this and his subsequent rebuttal to the basic counter-arguments that he was getting. Uh, you can find it at filmcrithulk.wordpress.com. Uh, that's F-I-L-M-C-R-I-T-H-U-L-K dot wordpress.com. It's a good read. It's a long read, but a good one. Yeah, so like... And I, mean, I think basically he says most of what I could want to. Yeah, it it just genuinely takes away from the gameplay experience. Like It cheapens even, the game. Even from... It a, degrades I, the game. I, I can't exactly refer to myself as a feminist. I, I respect females' rights. I don't crusade for them. I feel other people can handle that. But it does get uncomfortable at times. Just the things that are being said. And it, it kind of is ridiculous that the animated series managed to capture all of this grittiness, all of this realism. Nolan's movies managed to do that, and nobody nobody does that. I, I liken this more to, to the animated series, yeah. really. This is a gameplay ex- extension of the animated series. The, the, the thing is, it's really more of an amalgamation of everything. I really feel like they didn't take anything... Well, no, because they didn't take anything of Dent. They, they they took the personality of Batman more than anything else mm. from that. But the Joker's very different than the Joker from... I think the setting is taken from that a lot. I can agree with that. That a lot of Arkham City is inspired by that version of Gotham. Mm. But, like, you don't have the generic crime bosses yeah. that were in What the, I was getting at was, like, the setting, tone, that type of thing was probably borrowed a lot from mm-hmm. that. Yeah, there's there's actually a lot of political commentary in this game, which I think is kind of cool about this society that would lead to this kind of thing. Because, dude, sitting sitting where we are and having you know perspective and things to be able to look at this and go, this was clearly a bad idea. You have to wonder what sort of society would would entertain the idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, clearly Gotham is in fact the worst place on earth. Yeah. Um. But, but that said, there are much better sources to discuss this than us. Suffice to say, it it is kind of awkward. I It caused me to literally think that this was a mature-rated game, having heard it. 
Which is kind of stupid in itself in that we label games that, you know, do this juvenilized version of language and label label it as mature. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, it it's a little weird. I, I don't think I would label this game as teen for the most part. I'm kind of surprised that it is. Like, I, I personally think that there was less offensive material in all of the Halo games than you would find here. And just because they're, it's a first-person shooter, Halo is always labeled as a mature game. I, I think it's also because you're killing people in Halo, whereas... But people are regularly killed in this, just not by you. Yes, that's the thing, is, though. It's the, the, the sense of owning it, the sense of agency. I suppose. No, I, I still really feel like Arkham City should be labeled as a mature game. I understand that that would be the last thing that Warner Brothers would want because it would take away from potential players. But, you know... But the language and the context that it's being put in definitely and calls and there was, for there was, it. It's such a huge leap, I think, from the last game where yeah. none of that was there. Mm-hmm. Oddly enough, we still have no female prisoners in Arkham City, which is probably for the best... But that's kind of weird. That you don't beat up any lady criminals other than Harley. No, that somehow... Well, you don't even beat up Harley. At no point in this well, game... She, she gets roughed up. She gets roughed up, but even then... There, Batman roughs her up. There, there's no point where Batman actually fights Harley. It, it is not an actual combat sequence, no. No. Which is a shame. Because I would love to see Harley in a combat thing. You did have to fight her in the last game. Mm-hmm. But now, Harley kind of is out of the picture. Like, she's there as a character and as a voice, but she doesn't participate in anything in the game. Which is a shame. So, yeah, um, other than... Yeah, so that would be the reason, um... Other than this one really awkward thing, which, you know, I I Pir- can't Pir- say Pir- I'm Pir- going to give... I was correcting you on this, I think. What's that? Now, see, I didn't play all of um, Asylum. I've played large sections of it, but not all of it. Uh, uh, you fight henchmen, you beat Harley in a cutscene. Oh, okay. So you don't actually get to fight her. Fair enough. I thought in somewhere in that sequence where with the electric panels you fought her. Oh, well, it's been a no, long time since I played Arkham. that was just a bunch of henchmen. I remember that now. Okay, so I, I'm correct. I remember having a very hard time with that sequence. At, at no point have you fought Harley Quinn. I stand corrected, or as it would be sit corrected. So, yeah. Um, um, Because somebody in chat was asking if we would call this Game of the Year material, and I think that that particular thing really holds it back. Yeah. Other than the fact that we've still got two months left out of the year where big releases are still coming out, and I wouldn't feel comfortable putting this on that kind of pedestal without... I I actually kind of feel like this is the reason that most critics have been taking away a few points from it. Mm-hmm. Because it's been commented on a lot mm-hmm. that, well, this tonal thing really isn't right, and it's, we don't understand why it's here. It's jarring. Yeah. And it's such a huge leap. People who played the last game and enjoyed it were not expecting this. I know I wasn't. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It, and I'm sure the kids who were at the midnight release weren't either. Yeah. And... It's getting favorable reviews, and, and I give it a favorable view, review. I find this to be a monumentally fun That's game. what makes this sad, is it's insidious in that way. Yeah, this could be a perfect game. And, and I really hope that the developers come out and, and say, you know, what were you guys thinking when you put this in there? Did you intend for it to be this way? Mm-hmm. Was it a coding error that these lines occur way more than you expected? And I can't imagine it would be because of how much playtesting this thing no doubt got. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it, it's kind of sad that this is the thing that's keeping it from being a perfect game. I'm having more fun with this than I have with a lot of our games that we've played so far this year. This really could be Game of the Year material. And that's why I really want to see the developer's side of this argument. I, I just want to understand what they were thinking when this got put in. So, yeah, um... Other than other than that one glaring flaw, I wholeheartedly recommend Arkham City. This is the closest you will ever have to an experience of being Batman. 
unless you put unless on a suit you... and swing around the streets of Chicago. Because some people do that. You just stole my joke! <laughs> Thunder stolen. Just wait till that camera's turned off. She's gonna pull a Batman. Batman would have done it better. She'd have gadgets. You just have a taser, I'm sure. Possibly <laughs> mace. No, no. Weapons can be taken from you. <laughs> Alright, moving on. So yeah, that that's Arkham City. Apart from one glaring flaw, it's a really, really good game and is totally Mechanically, worth your time. Mechanically, it's brilliant. The animations are great. Everything, all the animations had character. There was one particular um, fight bit with Catwoman where you had knocked a goon over and she had used her legs to put him in a chokehold. And while she was doing that, she was, like, checking out her nails, waiting for him to run out of air and pass out. Mm-hmm. That was hilarious! Yep. The the artistic design in this game is flawless. Um, the combat system is fantastic. The, the free exploration roaming is exploration great. is fabulous and expansive and, and really makes you and feel if you like, get over the... I could run around in here for hours just doing stuff. And if you get over the ridiculous, ridiculousness of the plot, it's a great excuse for you to interact with all the villains. Because, really, that's all we wanted anyway. Yeah, the, the villains are the characters in the Batman universe. Well, see, what we needed was, the problem is, in, in Arkham Asylum, they were imprisoned. So there was already a handy excuse to have all of the major villains put in a box. But they couldn't be themselves in that situation. Yes. Because they were in prison. And so they needed a way to structure the story... To let them out of the box, but still have them all within that achievable area. Yes. And not have bystanders in the way. Yes. And they succeeded. So yeah, apart from that one glaring flaw, play Arkham City. It's a great game. One glaring flaw and a kind of shaky plot. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, yeah, I'm totally happy I have a copy of it. This this has been a wonderful game. So yeah, um, I guess moving on since we're already at 650 and hey, food is occurring soon. We had some news this week as BlizzCon occurred. Blizzard's annual, hey, let's throw down 400 bucks for entry to a con. Man, that's dumb. Blizzard fans, they're, they're loyal. So loyal. How many million subscribers? Suckers. Blizzard must literally have, like, gold-plated coffee cups. Forget that. Plated, solid gold coffee cups. Solid gold steins. Mm-hmm. Full of gold-infused beer. No, not even. It's just full of dew, but... (laughs) Gold-infused dew. They have their own flavor of dew designed exclusively for Blizzard executives. Anyway, Anyway, so there's pandas involved. Lots of pandas. So many pandas that the joke has already been made a few hundred thousand times of where the inspiration for this expansion came from. Anyway. Anyway, World of Warcraft will be expanding into the far east that we apparently completely missed being there. With a new race. God, explorers in the World of Warcraft are the worst explorers ever. Hey guys, we found this new continent over here. How did we miss that? They're very bad at their jobs. Right? Like, yeah, that frozen north place. Eh, We're not going to go there for a while. This giant continent off to the east. We just found it. Like, I I have to hope that Pandaria is a small place that we somehow could have missed. Otherwise, there, there's no excuse why we didn't find uh, Sweden. Unless it's, like, some, some big expanse like Northrend. I, I have to hope, like, just for comedy's sake it is. <laughs> so like, yeah, we completely missed this being here. This, this race of pandas have been a legend. Uh, so the Pandaren... Yep. The race that will be available. So yeah, we now have a race of panda dudes, which will be like the only legacy of pandas having existed in like what a decade. Um, let's see, and that's for both factions, right? Yes, that that's kind of the new thing. Pandas can join either faction. Pandarin. I'm just gonna call them the pandas. Okay, just as long as. Yep. We're establishing that we're not trying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother. Um, they can join either faction, which is kind of unique. This has not been done before. I'm really interested in seeing how they integrate the mechanics of can these dudes actually still talk to each other despite being cross-faction? Because that's always been like a line that Blizzard has held. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, the main problem being that, like, I guess if you take away the language barrier, cross-faction, people just tend to say mean things. But really, they can find ways to do that anyway, and Blizzard already manages their forums against that. And at this point, anyone could just have a tune on the other faction on the same server to log on to that tune and say whatever they wanted. So really, dropping that seems to be like a good idea. Just give everyone a common language that they can speak to each other. Mm-hmm. Like, the reason for having those separated in the, the old days doesn't make sense anymore. Anyone can get around it. So I don't think that's so much going to be an issue. The one issue that I have seen people questioning on forums and in uh, comment boxes has been, PvP is going to be really hard to tell what side the panda's on. Because, like, I, I don't know about you, but when I played World of Warcraft... As, like, my alliance back in the day when I was a heavy PvP player, I had trained my eyes for tar and kill. Undead kill. Blood elf, take it down. There's an orc. Holy crap, someone's actually playing an orc. Like, my eyes were trained for those races, that those are the enemy races. Seeing a Pandaren running with me and then seeing a panda with red text above his head, like, I could see a little bit of confusion if you're not playing with the text on. That is this an enemy or not? But of course, the total counter to that is well, you could just put your mouse over it and it and says you it can attack will, yeah. it. Then you can kill it. So I don't see that being much of an I issue. I can't has kill death. And, like, so, so far, I think we've only seen the male versions of the Pandaren. Like, we haven't actually seen any of the females. Um, hey, we do have a list of available classes, though. Most of them. Uh, let's see. Hunter, mage, priest, rogue, shaman, warrior, and the new class, monk, because you hope they would be able to play as that. So let's see, racial traits. Because, you know, kung fu panda, guys. Let's see, increases the stat benefits from food by 100%. Okay, not not really anything. Uh, Gormand, f- cooking skill increased by 15%. So they're fat, ha ha. Inner peace. Your rest experience bonus lasts twice as long. Okay, so we can power level pandas. Uh, Let's see. Bouncy. You take 50% less fall damage. That's three fat jokes. Yup. And quaking palm. You touch a secret pressure point on the enemy target, putting it to sleep for three seconds. So they have the three seconds stun. Okay. I could see that as being kind of cool. I like the character model. I actually think that it's kind of cool that they have their own unique character model. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I could see some fun in that. There was another important announcement from that uh, though too, wasn't there? The pet battle system. I suppose there was. I was going to get to that. Yeah. Let Let's keep talking about uh, traditional WoW for now. Um, so the new class is Monk, which combines a lot of intricate flowing combos. I guess is the idea. You can wear up to leather armor. You can wield a lot of different weapons. Um, wow, there's actually a ton of available race class combinations for this. So on the alliance side, we've got the Draenei. Okay, I totally want to play as a female Draenei monk. I think that would look awesome. Because nobody plays as male Draenei. No, they look weird. Um, They've both got tentacles coming out of their necks, just so we're aware. So let's see. The only <laughs> alliance race that can't be a monk is the Worgen. That I'm would be at, weird. I'm looking at that right, aren't I? And the only horde race that can't be the monk is the goblin. So wait, we have gnome monks, too? You can be a gnome monk. That's a thing. Gnome it up. Dwarves? Oh, yep, right there. Yep. Yeah, the only races that can't be the new class are the uh, the new ones. The ones from Cataclysm. So, no goblins, no worgen. No goblin, no worgen. Huh. Blood elf monk. A broken nail. That'd be the nail one. So yeah, um, the weird thing about the monk class is that they can't auto-attack. There's no just, like, right-click pummel with these. Everything you do has to be a move combo. But the, the point is that as long as you are maintaining your combo, 
you are going to be doing more damage than the auto-attacking classes. This, this is without a doubt a DPS class. Uh, let's see, monks are extremely capable in every role. I find that really hard to believe, but I guess we'll see how it works. Because, like, monk, you'd think that they can only do hand-to-hand -hand things, which a hand-to-hand -hand only healer would be terrible. Yeah, especially a fat one, because they'd have to, like... Hold on, I'll heal you! Jump across the map, touch, heal! <laughs> run all the way across the map, and then go, Oh no, Bob's getting hit over here! Run, 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 run. Yep. So are we done with this? Because I want to get to PokeWow. Yeah, I guess that's all I gotta say for the monk. It's weird that they can use weapons and yet are still good at hand-to-hand. -hand. I guess they're gonna be adding a lot more fist weapons to the game mm. to make up for this. But, uh, I don't know. I'm interested in seeing what it is. I, I definitely am intrigued. I like that so far this expansion isn't, oh no, a new giant threat is coming to kill the world. We need to all rise against it. This one is kind of just... Let's expand the existing world and add more stuff. Even though that makes the explorers really terrible? Yes, this makes the explorers the absolute yeah. worst. They, they have the worst cartographers. Guys, I found an entire new continent. Man, did we gotta we have, draw all these maps. No, we have wait, an I get it, I get it. There's a cartographer cartel. And they're just releasing new information as it's it goes so they can sell new maps. New maps, yeah. Wow, that's awful. But you were on that same wavelength as soon as I brought it up. <laughs> Oddly enough, I must have the brain of a criminal. All right, so yeah, I guess we can talk about the. They're pet calling battle this system. pet battle system, and well, how did you explain it to me? Because someone got some Pokemon in my WoW. I I literally think the way this went. Someone in the WoW offices was sitting there on their DS playing Pokemon, and the boss walked by, and they're like, What are you doing? Um, working on this new mechanic for the game? <laughs> Carry on. Crap, now I have to do it. <laughs> that, that's literally just what I think. trying to break this now. So, just looking at the screen here, this looks really similar to Pokemon, right? I mean, you've got your... Okay, so you've obviously lost a move from Pokemon, right? It, that, that's gone. You've only got three moves for your critter. But you're going to square off in a circular arena with another champion or character and their battle monster pet. And you've got three moves on the character. And you've got a potion ability so you can heal yourself. And you've got a capture ability for in case you're fighting a wild monster and want to try to capture it so that you can then use that one in a later fight. Yeah, it's Pokemon. But really, when you're combining, like, WoW, which is already great, and Pokemon, which is really great, if they do it right, I don't see what people are getting in such a huff about. Because, mm. like, hey, now there's just more stuff to do in WoW. But what's wrong with this? You could elect to not do that. Yeah, you can entirely ignore this thing. You don't have to play Battle Monster. It... It's just something they wanted to do to keep people in-game and playing. Mm -hmm. So you're taking one of the most addictive things that people love and putting it into something else that people are addicted to and love? Th this makes sense. I'm not going to get offended by it. I'm not going to be like, the WoW is over! The game is done! WoW's had weird stuff from the start. Hell, these days you can find a Plants vs. Zombies game in WoW. And, you know, never mind playing Peggle while you're on flight pads. Right? Like, I, I don't get what people are getting offended about. It, ignore it if you don't like it. If you just want to be the player that's like, I will raid, I will get new armor, and I will endlessly improve my character. Do it. But what's wrong with that? But... The, I mean, right now you can even get WoW free. Stop reading the chat box. <laughs> okay. So, like... I don't know. I, I don't see anything that people would be getting offended about with this. It's just more WoW. If you don't like WoW, you've pretty much already made that decision, so whatever Blizzard does doesn't matter to you. Uh, also added in BlizzCon, they've announced that they're going to do a new talent system, which I'm kind of intrigued as to what that is, but they haven't really detailed that yet. Uh, scenarios, epic scenarios, which are just, like, kind of out-in-the-world zones. 
uh, zone encounters. I think they're kind of taking a uh, rift. Yeah, they're thing. they're taking a cue from rift. Uh, people want things to do when they're just out in the zone that are kind of fun. Uh, they also have challenge modes, which um, they're just little mini games, basically in WoW that are gonna give you more things to do. They're they're just little extra bonuses to add in, so you're just not getting bored grinding loot. Yeah, because I mean, particularly folks at like top level have nothing to do. Yeah. So yeah, I I don't see a problem in this. So let's see. You can select a challenge mode before you enter a dungeon. In this mode, your objective is clear the instance and down all the bosses as fast as you can. Your gear will be normalized, meaning that instead of your own equipment, you'll be fighting using a set of gear that's appropriate for the instance. That way, the challenge level will be equal to your players. Okay, so you're just setting an objective before you go in, and you have to finish it in a certain amount of time or by doing a certain thing. I'm not seeing what the problem is. How very malifo. Right? We're going to normalize everything, and you're going to just try to play. Mm-hmm. It's all based on your skill. I, I like that idea. I like that As idea. As opposed to being based on gear score. Yeah, I like that idea more than the heroic dungeon, where, fine, we're just going to make it harder. Mm-hmm. We're going to up their, up their stats, up their armor, and make them hit a little harder. And that'll be your challenge mode. Mm-hmm. Giving me this actually makes me want to try it more. Mm-hmm. Because it's about my skill as a player and my team's ability to work together. Although, man, doing pugs with that would be so crap. Yeah, but really by now you shouldn't have to. So yeah, um... Overall, I'm kind of looking forward to Mists. I I think it's going to be a cool addition. I like that it's more than just here's a new giant threat with some new dungeons and some new gear and a new level cap. Mists of Pandaria. (laughs) Haha, it gets abbreviated to Mop. Yup. World of Warcraft. Mop. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is going to amuse me for quite some time. Okay, moving on. Um, we also got the trailer for uh, Heart of the Swarm, which continues to look cool. Carrying just We're basic- talking about StarCraft 2 now. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be on Blizzard products for the rest of the show. Um, Kerrigan effectively just tearing apart the universe, trying to get revenge on Mengsk. Uh, the one thing I don't like about this is they recently did an interview and said that the single player campaign in Heart of the Swarm is going to be shorter than than Wings of Liberty was because people were complaining that the single player of Wings was too long. Wasn't that already really short though? It was thirty six or no thirty four missions, but who complains about the game being too long? You know what you do when you're sick of playing the game? You stop playing it for a while and you do something else! Right? So this one's going to be uh, seven to eight missions shorter. Which is kind of crap. Like, really, who goes, my game lasted too long. I wanted to be on to the next thing faster. What? But I guess those are the ones who are just playing for the multiplayer or something. I don't know. But those people didn't bother with the single player campaign to begin with. I suppose. Like I thought, I'm ev- trying to logic this out. I thought and... every mission in Wings of Liberty had a point for being there. They all advanced the story a little bit, and it came to a nice conclusion. That that nice epic ending of the final fight in that game was totally worth it. It was a nice payoff. Um. But yeah, complaining that the game was too long and, and as a result, Blizzard making it shorter is... Wait, Pyro's got a point. What's that? Maybe Blizzard just made up that complaint so they would have to do less work. It's possible, but they, they said specifically that the way they came up with this data was that they checked the profiles of gamers and found where the like cutoff point was for the people who didn't finish the game. Mm-hmm. And, and so they figured that that would have been the fair place to have ended the game. And I think that's kind of a Mm cop-out in that the players who actually want to get the story and see the ending are the ones who are going to act to finish it. Those players who dropped out and didn't finish the game, what does it matter? You already got their money. Also, they clearly weren't that invested in the story. Maybe the full game for the people who want it. I was totally cool with the, like, nine-hour campaign that Wings of Liberty was. I thought that was great. They've already said that, you know, if more people are finishing Heart of the Swarm, that they will, uh, 
at least finish the story, make it longer for Heart of the or uh, Legacy of the Void, the third game, because really that's where you have to finish the StarCraft II story. So that one's probably going to have to be a longer one to begin with. So maybe this is the like shorter Empire version for our plot. We have to end in a bad place. So the third game feels epic, right? Mm-hmm. It's like Mass Effect Three. Oh God, Reapers. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was the big and StarCraft Two announcement. Soon enough. And finally, we have Diablo Three, which got the Demon Hunter added to the beta. I think Pyrosim is going to latch onto this com- conspiracy theory that it's all just a point of laziness on uh, Blizzard's part. We can't make enough story to involve the Zerg. Let's just make it shorter. No, we don't feel like doing it. So, yeah, somebody asked us to make it shorter. Yeah, that's it. And we've got this uh, We've got this list of player data. Pyro, he'll be investigating this. So, yeah. Then he'll just be perpetuating a blatant that, lie. It's that, that was the big nerd talk slash BlizzCon news. We didn't get to go, but then again, we weren't really interested in going, paying $300 just to go to a con. Despite the fact that the Foo Fighters did the closing concert. Yeah, but you could see them in concert for less. Uh, one thing you should check out is the winner of their 2011 costume contest. Yeah. Because, wow, her costume was amazing. And I'm not talking, like, slinky or anything. She was actually fully covered head to toe. And that's what's so incredible about it. Let me see if I can find this. <laughs> this is really, like, stimulating radio right here. Listen to Send Surf the Internet. Yeah, you guys need to look this up. I'm trying to find the link so that I can put it in chat. Chat box. Here we are. Fine. There she is. That's the winner. Dang. A, like, perfect uh, adjutant from StarCraft II. And, like, her mouth even moved. Like, that. that's actually her face. That's makeup. Dang. Here, I'll put the link in chat. Man, that must have taken forever. Here you go. I'm not even talking about, like, the acquiring of all the pieces and stuff, but, like, just getting it on must yeah, have taken if, if a long time. If you can find a video of this, uh, Jay Moore actually does an interview with her uh, after she announces the winner. And, yeah, that that's such a great costume. And cosplay, this is how it works. Unless you're broke. Then it's just whatever you can find on eBay. So yeah. it together. Well, I guess we can end here. So next week we will be having our review of The Sims Pets. Finally, you can add your... Sims 3 Pets. Yep. So you can add your puppies and kitties and horses For to your Sims version. game. Horses and... are exclusive to the PC. Yep. And as always, I'm Sen. And I'm Pixie. And you've been listening to Nerd Talk. We'll see you next Tuesday. Food! You realize the mic's still on.